Okay. Those of you who saw my last video commentary about NASCAR 14, it was basically a prediction of what the game was going to be. I made that video right after the announcement by Deep Silver and your Technics that there was indeed going to be a NASCAR 14. Those of you who saw the video might remember that I said it was going to be inside line with a few small changes here and there with the announcement of the new online league. So did it turn out to be what I said it was going to be? In my opinion, I think I, I pretty much nailed it. I'm not going to say that I was 100% right. There were a couple of small surprises for me. But overall, it was what I pretty much said it was going to be. A cut and paste rehash of Inside Line with some DLC. And that's pretty much what you should be able to expect from a yearly title. This is what happens. There's only a year's development time. That's not a lot of time to really do big things. New Technics themselves has come out and admitted that. They say, hey, you know, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get small improvements. We'll keep working on the game. And you keep telling us what you think is wrong with the game. And we'll do what we can. But I don't find that this game is worthy of being called a new game. To me, it's Inside Line DLC. Or Inside Line, I should say. And had they packaged it that way and sold it at an appropriate DLC content package price, I might have a little bit more of a, a better review of the game. Because then if you sold the game as, let's say, uh, Inside Line 2014 DLC package, $20. And with that, you're going to get New paint schemes, updated rosters, online leagues, and a few tweaks to the AI and the things, the bugs and the glitches that have been there since the beginning, we would address them. I'd be more than happy to pay $20 for that. I don't have a problem with that. That is what I would expect with one year. But that's not what they did. They chose to do what many uh, many developers do. They're not the only ones, especially with these yearly titles. They just pump them out. They promise you the world. And then you, when you play it, you're like, I already have this game. It, I bought it last year. So what? I have updated rosters new and the new latest paint scheme. Big, big fucking deal. I will say this. I'm going to start off with the good. Okay, I'm going to give you the good, the bad, and the ugly. The good is, I'm going to say right off the bat, the graphics, I think, are pretty good. But I've never had a problem with the graphics. It's not like they had to make leaps and bounds, you know, from the first game. It's always, the games always look very well, very good. Uh, the only difference, though, that I see from Inside Line is some changes with the lighting. But really... Not much else, but it didn't need it. So the graphics have pretty much been as, as good as you can expect for a current-gen console. And so I give them good a good grade for that. So gra the graphics are good. Uh, then we have, let's see, Online League. I'm not an online gamer, but I will say this. The idea of being able to have Online League with stats and the keeps full track of everything that's happening for a season, I think is the single most innovative thing your Technics has ever done as an idea because it changes online. It, it, it should be, it should change it because it's not just going online with a bunch of guys and running around in, in, in uh, Daytona or Talladega and just have a wreck fest. It's, you're still going to have, you know, unpredictable wrecks and stuff like that. But at least this online league system, what makes it so innovative is that it helps the online have something that it never had before. 
which is some sense of organization, which is huge because when it's unorganized, it's just guys showing up in a room, it's a one big free-for-all, nobody really cares how they drive because what are you racing for? This online league system gives you a chance to, to have organization. You're racing for something. So even if you can't win, you're still racing for points. You're racing to, to uh, move up in the standings to uh, try to win a championship. That's why I always talk so much about statistics, things like that. Those things matter. Without that, what do you have? It's just show up, run around, and go home. Big deal. So that's really innovative. I give them a lot of credit for that. And even if it doesn't work perfectly, which I don't think it will, I'm willing to say that's one of the few things that you can say, hey, it's their first time. Uh, give them a chance. It's the same excuse people like to give them for everything else, which I don't buy. But at least when it's a new, innovative idea, you're trying something new, something bold, something that's going to push the series forward. I'm more than willing to give you that excuse of, hey, the thing doesn't run perfectly. There's a lot of bugs with it. It needs to be worked out. But it, at least they're, they're trying something innovative. So I give them credit for that. And that's another good thing about the game. Another thing that I found, I put it in the good pile because there's really not much else for the good. But I will say that I like the new difficulty uh, slider. It's not really a slider, but you could pick the percentage for the, the difficulty of the AI. And I like that because it gives you a little more, uh, uh, more options. To, to really adjust it, to, to make it just challenging enough to give you a, uh, a sense of accomplishment. And, and that's, what, that's what's fun when it's, a, when it's challenging. Without it being too difficult for you, depending what type of driver you are. So it's, it's important that you could really, almost down to, to the T, you know, adjust it to what you're comfortable with. And you don't have that big gap between hard and uh, like the last game with, uh, you know, the top level, I forgot, but that hard, medium, whatever, there's a big gap in between each difficulty setting that, you know, one setting is just too easy, the other one's too hard for a lot of people. So I like this. That's a good thing, although I will say it doesn't really, it seems to work different at every track, which is Again, that's something that's good idea, doesn't really work as good as it should. So, what can I say? I put that in the good pile. This game needs all the help it can get. But, unfortunately, I couldn't really list anything else that was really good uh, other than the things we already saw in Inside Line. There were some good things there, but I'm, I can't put that in the good list because... All you're doing is rehashing last year's game. And that's the biggest issue I have with this game, which we're going to go to the bad right now. First, I'm going to start off with the sound. The sound could be better. There are even times in the game where the engine revs up to, to high RPM, and even when you slow down or hit the brakes, it stays there, stuck. That's a glitch, it's a bug, I'm sure that's not the way it was meant to be, but that's a big issue. It's happened to me several times, it's really awkward, and the music in the game is atrocious. I'm sick and tired of all these NASCAR games, and, I'm, and I don't care, I'm even going back to my favorite NASCAR game of all time, uh, Thunder 2004. As great as that game was, it wasn't perfect, and just like all old NASCAR games, they seem to have this idea that everybody that is into NASCAR is into these over-the-top, screaming, hard rock uh, uh, songs. And, you know, not everyone's a redneck. It's just, you could have done something like Gran Turismo does, 
which is more of an ambient music. But even if even then, uh, the I'd like to the to be able to use cus put it put a custom playlist in directly off my uh, PlayStation, where I can make my own custom soundtrack. I could play the songs I like, and then they should play in the menu settings. The issue I have with this is. I know there's people out there that are saying, yes, you can already do that, and I tried it, and what happens is the music plays, it just keeps playing, so even when you're not in the menu anymore, and the game is, and the music's supposed to stop, and then you're supposed to be like on the track driving or testing or whatever it is, the music never stops, it keeps playing, so there's really no difference between that and just playing a loud radio in the background while I'm playing the video game. So, that's a problem. I don't see any reason. That's This sounds like it's something really easy. NBA 2K does this perfectly. You can play a custom playlist, and it will actually just play your music whenever there's music that's supposed to be playing in the game. It doesn't just keep playing while you're on the court nonstop. So, that's something that needs to be addressed. Uh, then we go to the AI the bugs and the glitches I can't believe we're still seeing the same glitches and not only that we have new bugs and glitches that I've never seen before the game's been freezing on me almost every third race the game completely freezes a lot of people claim that it doesn't happen to them but it does happen it's happened to me it's also, I've also had situations where the pit stops, they're still, even though they, they did speed up the pit stops, okay, it's inconsistent. Sometimes, actually most of the time, something odd happens that wasn't meant to happen. You go into the pits and the car never stops. You never make an, you never, you're never even given a choice to make adjustments. The car just drives down the pits and goes right back out on the track and the game stays under caution until you sit there five minutes go by ten minutes go by nothing happens you have to reset the entire uh, console so the game didn't actually freeze but that's not supposed to happen and then when it does pit and it does do what you ask it to do you find the same issues with the setups changing on their own uh, the the tire pressures are all the way sky high to like 48 pounds or whatever it is. And you spend all your time going down pit road, mashing that button as fast as you can to get the tire pressure down. You really have no time to make any real adjustments. You're just trying to undo what this stupid game did for you that you didn't ask it to do. And they still haven't fixed that. This is game number four. And people are still saying, give them a chance. So it's only their, first it was their second try, then their third, now it's going to be their fourth try. And these are the same bugs and glitches since the first game. They haven't shown any ability to fix this. And then they rush this, they, really, this is a rushed game. It just feels unfinished. It's a mess. But that's what happens with yearly games. They're cut and paste, plus a little DLC content. Really, you got inside line, plus updated paint schemes, the new cars, the uh, the rosters, which haven't been finalized yet, but that's fine. I The whole thing with the marketing and getting all the licensing down, I understand that's a big mess, and it sucks, but I'm okay with that. I don't complain, because I know that stuff's coming. That has really, that you could say is out of your Technic's hands. Although, one can argue uh, by this point, they should have a better relationship with all these sponsors. And they shouldn't be the same song and dance every year. I don't remember this being, it being like this when EA had it. And EA, yeah, they had their problems and that series went down the toilet just like every other cut and paste series does. But that's what happens when you make games on a yearly basis. 
The problem is they're charging $50 and they're calling it a new game. And those of you who say, well, the bottom line is it's better than inside line. Technically, yeah, because it is inside line plus these additions. So it has to be better. It also brings along inside lines, bugs, and glitches that haven't been fixed. So, yeah, technically it's better, but that's the wrong question. That's the wrong question to ask yourself. The real question you should ask yourself, is it better, but is it so much better that it's worth calling it a new game and paying the full price of a new game? And to that I say, hell no. I'm not going to go along with the idea that this is anything more than a, than a rehash of Inside Line with some tweaks here and there and some additions. I love this the idea of this new online league thing. Okay? And even if it doesn't work perfectly, like I said, it's a, it's an innovative push forward. I give them credit for that. But that's it. Really, that's that's about it. It's Inside Line with that. And a couple of things, updated rosters and paint schemes. whoop de do. So I can't in good conscience tell somebody who already owns a copy of Inside Line, go right ahead and buy the game. I will say, though, that if online is all you care about, you have to justify a $50 purchase if, if it's worth it to you to get this online league thing. And if I was a hardcore online racer, I hate to admit it, but maybe I, I would find it worth it, but that's because of another thing I'm about to mention. A huge, my matter of fact, my number one issue with this entire series since the first game has been, yes, I'm going to say it again, statistics and the lack of statistics is atrocious. I cannot believe that a developer can constantly create a sports game. Because that's what this is, a sports game. They make no bones about it. How can you develop a, a sports title and not implement full, a full statistical compilation for career mode? What kind of career mode is it if you can't look back to see what you accomplished? You did nothing. You finish the season, and then you go to the next season, and everything resets. There's no history. There's no... Top fives, top ten, wins, DNFs, laps led, championships. And and there's other things you can list. All the types of things we've seen in sports games dating back all the way to the first PlayStation. There's no excuse for this. This is this should, they should be embarrassed. This is game number four. I, I couldn't believe it. I was I was convinced. When they talked about statistics, I was like, okay, finally. Finally, we're going to get a career mode, and you're going to have statistics. Nothing there. What the fuck? That alone, for me, gives this game a failing grade, even if everything else was fine. And I'm sorry. I know a lot of people don't, don't think it's a big deal, but I do. So... You're, you're supposedly going to get it with the online league. I haven't been able to be on, an, on a league because I haven't been able to find somebody so I could join yet. I am going to try it, but I've only run regular online races, which, of course, it's the same fucking Talladega, Daytona. Talladega, Daytona. That's all people want to race. That's another reason I can't stand online racing. People just, that's all they want to do. And it's just a couple of laps and people wrecking. And you can't go one or two laps without a caution. I don't see the fascination with online racing. I understand the idea and I certainly see the potential. But the only time online racing for me is ever going to truly work properly is in a system like iRacing. Which has live people monitoring, organizing, everything is organized perfectly nobody pays the kind of money that it takes to run iRacing to come in and wreck people on purpose that doesn't happen 
okay? And that's the difference between that and a console game. I that's that's why I don't know if we're anywhere near the maybe maybe in with next gen they can do something, but it ain't gonna come from this developer. I've lost all faith in these guys. And a prediction I made in my previous video, as I was talking about before, was Deep Silver, Deep Silver and Eutechnics already worked on, collaborated together to create the worst game ever created, something called Road to Hell. And it, for those of you who don't, don't know about it, I, I highly recommend you checking out Angry Joe's video. He's got a great channel. He's, he does great work reviewing games. Uh, he's awesome, very entertaining, and he certainly does, a, I mean, this is what he does, you know. I'm just a dude who likes games, and I only talk about things that I feel really passionate about. I've only put out a handful of videos. This is not something I do for a living. It's not something I do as some, you know, as even a hobby. This is just, I care about NASCAR. I care about this series of games, which is why I'm so pissed. And I really wanted to like this game. I really did. I was rooting for it. I wanted to be wrong. I don't want to be right. I didn't want this to be just cut and paste plus DLC and, and updated paint schemes and and, 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 and and rosters. I didn't, I wanted it to be more than that. And people, I've seen a lot of reviews and a lot, and, and the scary thing is a lot of these reviews are actually saying it's a, it, the game's really good. And I don't have a problem with somebody who likes the game. If you like the game, God bless you. More power to you. I wish I could feel the same. And I certainly don't tell people that their opinions are wrong. If you if, if you see a review and somebody says the game's good, and that's his opinion, it's his opinion. The reason I, I have questions is because from all these videos, the ones that have positive reviews, Never mention all the bugs, glitches, and the AI, how the, how it just completely runs over you. They still have no awareness, okay? The, I don't see the, the big improvements that, that have been made, that other people say, yeah, it's, it's much improved. No, I think that's wishful thinking, to be honest. I think people want to believe everything that... You technics promised them. They want to believe it. So they went out and they and they, they were looking forward to the team, as was I. And you wanted to believe this time they're going to get it right. This time they're going to fix everything. And they didn't. This game is almost broken. There are game-breaking issues with the game. It freezes completely. Then there's the new restart system. I kind of like the idea because a lot of people, like a lot of people say, it's more realistic. You know, if you mess up on a restart, you're going to spin your tires. But they went overboard, in my opinion. Sometimes you're just barely tapping the throttle and the car wants to spin out. And then at other tracks, it doesn't do it as badly. So, you, they definitely needed to work on it more it just feels like it was thrown in at the last second it doesn't feel like like the rest of the game it just feels like it was just all rushed which we know it was because they've admitted you know you can't do but so much in a year this is why I I, I don't know I it doesn't have to be a yearly title and you technic said from the beginning we're not going to do a yearly game we're just going to do it as we we see fit where we can really make improvements. Bullshit, because that's exactly what this series has been from the start. Cut and paste, yearly rehash. Okay? And while Inside Line was a big improvement from 2011, it wasn't that Inside Line was so great, it was that 2011 was so bad. So they got it to the point where it was much better, the, the, the difficulty was a lot more challenging, but in my opinion, they still haven't been able to shake that casual gamer mentality. They, that's the other thing about these reviews. I think a lot of these reviews are from people who aren't truly hardcore NASCAR fans, who truly understand the sport, the ins, the outs. You know, it's not just what happens on the track, but off the track. 
Okay. Now, I like, I do like the the implementation of, of you know, the engine shop and all the other things. That's a good step forward. But there's something that happened in this game that I cannot understand. One of the things I did like about Inside Line was when you're in the car setup screen and you're working on setups, whether it's during testing or practice, and you every time you highlight one of the parts, the springs, the shocks, the ride height, every little thing you did to the car, there would be a, a simple explanation on the side, and it would tell you raising this will cause the car to get tighter on exit or entry or looser or this or that. You knew what you were doing and, and how the changes were going to affect the car. For some reason, the new setup screen looks a lot like the old screen, except you don't have these explanations anymore. So if you're not a NASCAR engineering expert in car setups, and I'm not, and, I, and I'm pretty knowledgeable about NASCAR, but I, I don't fully have that program where I know what a shock or a spring change, uh, a stiffer spring is going to do in the front to, towards the rear or looser or on the left side, right side. I don't have that program. I need that little guide. It's not there anymore. You just go and make changes, and if you're unaware of what everything does, you just... It's hit and miss. You just throw stuff up, see what sticks, go out on the track. If the car feels better, you don't really know what you did to the car. That was a huge, huge screw up. Why they left that out of the game. And then you, it, it's a cut and paste of inside line. So they purposely took it out. Why would you do that? Why would you not leave what works in the game? So not only are there the same old bugs and glitches, but they created new issues. I don't understand. I don't, and it's so, I'm afraid to make any changes other than dropping the tire pressure, which don't hold because the minute you pit, they jacked up again. So the setups don't hold anyway, but you you don't know what you're doing in the, in the setup screen. Am I supposed to go out and, and research this stuff on the internet and print out pages so as I'm messing around with this stuff, I got to look through this is ridiculous. It's, un it's, 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 it's crazy. I, I don't get it. I don't know what else to say. There, I know I missed a few bugs, glitches here, there, whatever. Uh, I'm just going to go to the ugly. All right? We've had the good, we've had the bad, and the ugly. So I'm going to tell you right now. One, this idea of yearly titles. I don't understand why they continue to do this what's wrong with taking three years okay take three years if you have to and put all your resources into making the best possible game so that when you finally do release it it's not a bug filled mess and I know most games release with patches coming because there are little things here and there but this is not your typical game. This game is messed up. And if you think, anybody thinks, that they're going to fix this with one or two patches, you're sadly mistaken. That's another prediction I'm going to make. And I know it's going gonna, it's gonna to be exactly like I said because it's already happened. That's what happened with Inside Line. These people don't support their products. They put out a game. They put out, make one or two patches, and then they move on to the next game. That's what happens with yearly titles. And that's what's going to happen here. They're still working on DLC, which they're going to they're want more money for that. For what? Paint schemes and, and, and highlights packages? Who cares about highlights packages? Look at all the problems you got with the game. Why don't you fix that? Why don't you add, finally, a full, robust statistical compilation for career mode? Why don't you spruce up the, the, the presentation, which is another thing that goes into, into the bad list, because they don't get it. The presentation is still awful. Just 
win a race and, and watch Victory Lane, and you tell me how many clones are there, your entire race team is made up of one guy cloned repeatedly. I can't believe it. That is lazy. You couldn't get a couple of guys to, to render some decent cutscenes. You got the same crap from inside line, and you got seven or eight clones in the background while you're standing there pumping your fist. And that's another thing. I like the paint booth. It works well. But what about the what with the issue you, you can't put your name on the windshield? Every other driver has their name on the windshield except you. They couldn't do that. That's too difficult. That requires some incredible massive amount of coding. You couldn't do that. I was looking forward to that. To see my name on the windshield. I think that's cool. A lot of people like stuff like that. It's very simple, but it matters. Details matter. And that's something that Eutechnics does not get. They don't get it. And they never will. They never will. So, you got that. You got no statistics. And then, you got this crappy uh, presentation. There's no inclusion of you in career mode. They don't talk about you the way they do in NBA 2K. How about, in addition to the paint booth, wouldn't it be cool if you could customize your own driver, make them look the way you want? How about designing their fire suit? Wouldn't that be cool? Make it so that you can customize it so that it matches your, your custom paint scheme. And then you could put whatever uh, sponsors patches on your uniform, on your fire suit. Wouldn't that be cool? People like stuff like that. I know there's people out there saying, who cares about that? It's not a big deal. Who cares? Well, that congratulations. It's because of people like you that developers get away with stuff like this. Because what I'm what I'm talking about is simple stuff that's been, been done and it's been in games for many years. Okay? You can customize your own character in half the games that exist out there. Okay, and then how, wouldn't it be nice if in the pre-race, during the commentary, there is a little presentation there, but it's very generic, doesn't talk about you. What about showing you your car in the warm-up lap as they're talking, and then they could say, hey, the number 26, whatever number you pick, or if you pick a nickname, they can call you by that, because I know they can't just call you by whatever na your name is. Uh, that's too difficult, but do it like two, uh, NBA 2K does it. You choose a nickname, and they call you by that. If your nickname is Silk, they refer to you as Silk. So let's just say, or in, in here, if they wanted to refer to you as the number, you know, in the pre-race, say, hey, and today, the number 26 car qualified 13th, so he'll be in row, row uh, 7 on the inside. And... Last week, he finished 8th at Darlington, and he needs to have a better finish this week if he wants to make the chase, or he's in this place in the standing. You know, change it up a little so that every race is a little different, but you can always say how, they, how you finished in the previous race while you're doing the warm-up lap. It adds immersion to the game. These things matter. These things are part of details, and the fact that you can't get people to render stuff like that that's been doing it's been part of games for a while now that says a lot about you as a, de a developer and it's all oh, it's not always the developer it's the publisher we're always blaming every you know yeah maybe it is the publisher but before deep silver it was activision everybody makes excuses which leads me to to the other thing i want to talk about and it's about all of us as a gaming community and i'm going to say I have never seen a group of consumers who continuously make excuses for a developer or a company who makes crappy products. I've never seen such a thing. You don't see it anywhere else. Only in video game in the video game industry. Only in the gaming community do people come out to defend a developer from making shitty products. I've never seen that before. It only happens in the video game industry. 
really? I, I'm on the forums, and all you see are people, oh, and they even deny that there's issues with the game. So people that are making complaints, you have these other people defending your technics and coming after the, the complainers saying, oh, I'm sick and tired of hearing complaints, blah, 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 my game is great. Well, congratulations. Maybe your game hasn't frozen up on you yet. Maybe you haven't experienced the terrible AI or how the setups don't hold. Just like in all the other games. Maybe you haven't experienced that yet. But to, you're basically calling people liars. Or you just don't care. You don't want to hear it. Because why? What are you so afraid of? You think you technically is going to take their ball and go home? Because they're hurt. their feelings are hurt? They're the ones who say, we appreciate criticism. We want to hear what you think about the game so we can make the game better. But they haven't. You mean to tell me they haven't heard? about all the bugs, glitches, and, all, and the AI, the terrible AI and all this. But instead of fixing that, no. They're working on DLC and highlights packages because that's what people really want. People don't want the main gameplay fix. They don't want statistics. They don't care about that. Give them highlights packages and sell it to them so we can make more money. And that's what you defend. I don't get it. I really don't. And if they decide to stop making NASCAR games, really, is it the end of the world? Is it? I mean, all they've done so far is make garbage. And let me tell you something. If, if you haven't seen Road to Hell, I don't know what to tell you. They, they, are, they are quickly gaining a terrible re reputation, and this, this game doesn't help them. There are some things about it that have some potential, but I don't buy a game for potential. I buy a game because I expect it to work properly, and I expect to have a good time, okay? And whatever small moments of fun that I've had were quickly erased when something happened that wasn't supposed to happen. And when these bugs and glitches show themselves, and I just spent 30, 40 laps working my way from the back all the way into the top 10, top 15, and because of a bug or a glitch or because of some fucked up pit stop, I end up all the way in the back again, or on one of these restarts that feels like you're on an oil slick or on a sheet of ice, a, a big it causes a big wreck, and now I go from... From, from leading up front to, to midway down the, the pack, because that you get steamrolled by 20 cars. Even in, if you want to make the argument that, oh, that's realistic, that's how NASCAR is, you know? Restarts aren't supposed to be perfect. Well, yeah, you know what? I agree with that, but I, I never see cars that spin to the point where you get passed by 15 cars. That doesn't happen. You might lose a couple spots, but that's not normal. Okay, and I don't know, I think that the idea is decent, but it, it doesn't seem ready for prime time. It seems like it was rushed. I'm done. So, I think this game really, for the most part, is a failure. And just because there are things about it that have potential and could be great or could be good, that, is that why we buy products now? Is that what we're about now? That's where we've come to now as consumers. That our job is to defend a company that sells us games, is making money off of us, and is selling us games that are a complete mess. That is that where we are? That's that's what it looks like to me. I don't get it. In the real business world, you make a product and if it sucks or if it has big, big issues, you either Stop making those products, or you make better products, or you go out of business. That's how business works. You don't see people running out there and defending a company for making shitty televisions with big issues of problems, screens that, that, that burn out, or something like that. You don't see that. When a, pro when a, when a product has issues, that company pays for it. They don't get to keep making crappy products and, and have people defend those products. So, 
that's my opinion. And so I cannot really, it is what I predicted it would be. Cut and paste, rehash with a couple of small additions to it and a whole lot of bugs, glitches that are still there from since the first game. They haven't fixed them and there's no reason to think that in the next one or two patches that you get that they're going to be fixed all of a sudden. These people don't know what they're doing. So, and then they, how long before they start working on next year's game? You think they're going to, that's why they, there's not even any product support. If you own Inside Line, you, and, and you, after those first couple patches, you're out of luck. They, they, they went right to this game. Now they're going to go into the next game. And when they, when they come out with a next gen game, I got news for you. Anybody who thinks it's going to automatically mean that it's going to be a great game, developers make great games, not hardware. They use the hardware, if they're smart, to its maximum potential. But you, you can give the greatest hardware in the world to a crappy developer, and they're going to still make crappy games. Look at Madden, another cut-and-paste game. And when you saw the commercials for the next gen, woo! Then you bought the game and you found out that everything you saw in the commercial was pre-rendered cutscenes that were made specifically for, for, for the commercial. And you looked at that and you thought, wow, I can't wait to play that. And then you play the game and it's like, it's pretty much last year's game on the older console with just a little bit better looking graphics not really a, a huge leap that that people are expecting automatically with the next gen so it runs at 1080p and it runs at 60 frames per second we did our job that's what a lot of these people are doing instead of really pushing everything that it's supposed to, to, to push on the next gen that's it. And that's what's going to happen here. So, I mean, I, I left out a few things, but I'm, I'm, I'm getting a headache. Because I'm seriously, I am really upset with this, this whole fiasco. I'm going to see how the online is. But even if that runs great, it doesn't fix all the issues. It doesn't fix everything they left out. And the things that they've taken out. Too many issues, and I don't know what, even the, the, the initial patch did nothing. I don't see what it did. So, it is what it is. That's my review, and I guess if I had to say, being, I would give it a 5 out of 10, and that's being generous only because that they showed a little innovation with the online league. But they seem to have put all their effort into the online because most people are raving it, what, whatever they're praising is really online and offline Daytona Talladega. They love the plate racing. They, they, that's what most people like. But what about all the other tracks? Plate racing is four times a year if you run a career mode or if you run a season mode. So, they know that. They know that that's all people play online. So, they said, let's, on the offline, just, just worry about that. And even that doesn't work perfect. But, you got four, you're running four wide at Martinsville and Bristol. That's another thing that I forgot to mention. There's so many issues that I forgot to mention. And, I'm, it, there's no point. Really, there's just no point. And yet you have people who are crying about people complaining. This game's great. I don't know what people are talking about. Really. That's why I don't believe half the reviews that have come out. That giving, I've seen people give the game 8 out of 10. These people are not hardcore gamers. They're not hardcore NASCAR fans. And they probably never played NASCAR Thunder 2004. That's right. And that's still the best game easily. Some people have actually compared this game to that game, saying this is a, this is comparable to that. This is the closest thing to that. Really. 
you keep defending these guys, and we'll keep getting getting garbage and people saying, "Oh, you're wasting your time making complaints." Well, you Technics is the one that keeps saying, "Give us constructive criticism. We'll we we'll we'll take it. We'll learn from it." Well, if that's true, then they would never heard anyone complain about the AI and the and the terrible awareness where they just run over you like you don't exist. And the hand and and everything else. These are the same issues from the first game. This isn't like new stuff. And they still haven't fixed it. So that I if they if they really pay attention to the comments, I don't know. They don't care. Or maybe it's all BS, which wouldn't surprise me. One other thing that I forgot to mention. Ed Martin, who was in charge of the NASCAR Thunder series at EA, which is still the greatest. He is in charge of marketing or he's in marketing. And that makes me wonder, why is he in marketing? He's the one guy responsible for the success of that series. And when he left EA, that and the Thunder Series became, you know, NASCAR 2006 and 7, that series went down the toilet. That's not a coincidence. He obviously understands what a NASCAR game should be like. So instead of putting him in charge of development, he's in marketing. I don't get it. I don't know, maybe, maybe he wants to be in marketing. Maybe he asked to be. I don't know. But whoever is in charge of development at Utechnics has no idea what they're doing. Because if you can forget about putting statistics in the game four fucking straight years in a row, you don't understand NASCAR. You don't understand sports games. You can't have a sports game without stats. I can't fucking believe it. That is mind-numbingly stupid to leave it out. And you ship this game out and you call it the best NASCAR game ever. I know that's all hype, but you know what? It's our fault because we let them get away with it. We defend them. We make excuses for them. Ugh. That's all. Leave uh, your comments. Uh, maybe you agree, disagree, whatever the case may be. That's my feeling on it, and it is what it is. Thanks.